What's up guys? So today I wanted to do a video that I've been thinking about for a while. I'm just now kind of having the chance to sit down and do it. Um, so today's video is going to be about check-ins. Um, so this is not based on anything um, to do with anybody specifically or anything like that. So it's going to be um, just some general information, um, things I've encountered over the years and things I've learned and, and just that sort of thing. So I want to start uh, just kind of by defining what a check-in is, uh, you know, in this coaching client, you know, fitness realm. So a check-in is going to be a situation where you send your coach something to analyze and then to either make changes or not. The coach will either make changes or not, depending on the data that's provided in that check-in. Um, so that's the, the broad overview, and I'll talk about a little more in depth about what I do specifically in mine, um, but that's just kind of the general definition and, and what it is. So who is checking in? Um, personally, I have everyone check in. Um, I can't imagine a scenario where if you have a client um, that you wouldn't have them check in. Um, don't you think so, Chewy? Chewy agrees. So everybody that I work with is going to check in, and I figure most coaches probably feel the same way. Um, why uh, are we checking in? Um, the reason we check in is to see if uh, progress is happening, um, you know, making sure we're going the right direction, uh, an opportunity to ask any questions and express any feelings, you know, about the programming or about the nutrition or anything uh, at all. Um, so the why is going to be just to make sure that progress is continuing uh, and that any changes that are necessary are, are made, um, you know, whether that's taking away food or adding food or taking away cardio, adding cardio, giving refeeds, cheat meals, uh, free meals, whatever you want to call them, and that sort of thing. So that's kind of the why in general. Um, how? Uh, that's up to the coach and that's up to the client. The, the Almost every check-in that I have, except for uh, a few, um, you know, close to a show or, uh, you know, if somebody has technology issues or something like that. Um, they're all emails. Uh, so I have everybody check in via email. I know some people use different apps, different software programs uh, to keep all their, their data in, uh, you know, whether that's WhatsApp or whether it's something like Trainerize. I know a lot of people use things like that. I like to use emails because that's what I've been doing um, for the duration of the time I've coached other than my first year of coaching competitors, which was... Um, via text, but that was when I didn't have very many clients and it didn't, it wasn't hard to keep up with. Um, so that was the first couple of years that I did them via text. Um, and so when, um, I have people check in weekly at least, um, I know some coaches will do, uh, you know, bi monthly check-ins, monthly check-ins, that sort of thing. I don't see a problem with that. Um, other than the fact that I feel like I'm not providing value or accountability uh, if I'm not, you know, having people check in weekly. Um, so that's why I like to keep weekly check-ins in, even if someone's in the off season or a general population client, um, I like to keep check-ins, you know, to at least a weekly basis. I will have people check in, uh, an additional time during the week. Um, if they're a competitor and they're close to a show. So I have every, every competitor that I have checks in on Thursday. And then, uh, once a show gets closer, I'll have them check in on Mondays as well. So <clears throat> I will have, you know, the, the opportunity to make changes more frequently if I need to, um, you know, or provide more, more food or less food or take away cardio or whatever that is. I can do it more frequently, you know, based on the additional check-in uh, that my clients provide to me. Um, so what does my check-in consist of? So my check-ins have a place for you to put your body weights from the last six days. Um, and then your current body weight for the day, um, as well as I have a hunger scale and an energy scale. Um, so I like to get the information from my clients uh, based on, you know, how they're feeling. Um, you know, sometimes the hunger scale can matter. So if somebody's far out from a show and their hunger is getting pretty high, you know, that's a discussion we'll have. You know, maybe there's some way we can manage that better. Uh, maybe there's an opportunity to, to give some more food there. Um so that's a conversation we'll have if necessary. And then there's an energy scale. Usually those are inverse. So if hunger is high, energy is typically low. Um, so if I see that both of them are high or both are low, um, you know, I, I know that's probably an issue 
or maybe there's just a misunderstanding on how the scales are supposed to work in, in my system. So I'll have that conversation depending on the information that I'm given. Um, but those are two things that are very important to me in my check-in. So, you know, how, how are you feeling energy wise? And then how's your hunger? So those two are in there. And then below that, I have, um, a place for, uh, you know, if you're having any digestive or menstrual issues. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be issues, but just kind of an update on, on those types of things. So if digestion is going well, or if it's not going well, or if you're, you know, if, if I have a female client that has just started the cycle or just finishing or whatever the case may be, I want that information because that can affect decisions I make uh, regarding nutrition and, and training. So that part is in there um, and it's all in just one one um, section in, in the check-in. And at the very bottom of my check-in, there's a place for pictures. Those, um, those are important, obviously, because we're dealing with physique um, changes, you know, whether that's a general population client or whether it's a competitor, um, there's, you know, a, a visual aspect to what we're doing, um, you know, almost every, every time. So <clears throat> there's a place for pictures. Those, uh, just as a side note, those need to be in consistent lighting, um, at consistent angles at the same time of day, every time. So I like for everyone to send them to me, um, or to take them fasted, uh, first thing in the morning on the day of their check-in. And then ideally send the check-in, you know, very shortly after that, um, I like to get the check-ins early so that I can, you know, make changes uh, as quickly as possible if, you know, if those are, are, are you know, needed to be made. Um, so it's really ideal just to, to send them, you know, immediately after you take the pictures. It's, it doesn't, the, the, the form doesn't take very long. So that's kind of where I'm, you know, I'm at on that. Um, the expectations, uh, you know, as a, as a coach, you know, I expect check-ins, to be on time, thorough, honest, and um, consistent. Uh, and then, you know, I answer the ones that I get, um, you know, I answer them in order of, you know, priority for one, but then order I receive as well. So, you know, if I get one that's later, you know, in the day or, or you know, at night or days later or something like that, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly not a priority to the client to get a response. Um, so, you know, I have other days of check-ins and other things that I have to take care of. So I will get to those, you know, when I can. And if you're a coach, you know, it's important to set those boundaries and guidelines for, you know, what you expect out of your clients from the beginning so that you don't have to have conversations, you know, as, as it goes on. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I expect as far as that goes. Now there's two sides to this, right? So you're checking in with your coach, uh, me or whoever it is, you're sending out that information, you're collecting the data for the coach, uh, and then you send it out. Um, what should you expect from a coach? Um, you should expect the coach to look at the information, uh, analyze the information, compare some of that information to the prior week if necessary. Um, you know, I don't always necessarily go back and look at pictures from the previous check-in or, or whatever, um, you know, but it is important to make sure that there's a gauge of, you know, how progress is, is happening and that sort of thing. So from your coach, you should expect, um, you should expect them to look at what you send them, of course. And then as far as, you know, time frame for response, um, depending on how busy your coach is, it doesn't necessarily have to be same day. Um, I am currently in a position where I can answer my competitors same day, as long as they send my, you know, send the check-ins, you know, typically during the normal working hours, because I typically stop, you know, answering check-ins at six or 7 PM, um, you know, until the next day. So most of my check-ins, especially competitors, uh, I answer same day, uh, you know, as long as I'm able. So that's, that's mine. Like I said, a lot of coaches, um, you know, they don't have the, the capacity to answer every single check-in on the same day. So, you know, within 24, 48 hours, you should probably be receiving a response from your coach. Um, and if you're not, that's probably a conversation you should have, you know, because it is important to get changes made, especially if you're in a contest prep. Um, so that's something to think about as well. You know, from from a coaching standpoint and a competitor standpoint, you should be getting responses to your clients and responses from your coach, you know, within 24, 48 hours, just because it is important to get those changes made. I've heard of people taking two, three weeks to respond to check ins, and that makes no sense to me. Um you know, because this is literally our jobs as coaches. So that's my, um, you know, two cents on that. Um, so as far as 
I mean, that's pretty much the, the logistical part of everything. So, you know, it's important that you're communicating with your coach, providing the data that they need. And then as a coach, it's important that we're analyzing that data and providing a timely response. So if you are a client uh, of anyone and they have you do check-ins, just know that those are very important. Um, you know, we ask for what we ask for for a reason. Uh, we make decisions based on all of that. So, you know, provide all the details you can or that you're asked of or asked for. Um, and then, you know, as a coach, you know, make sure that you're taking in that information and making decisions based on that and getting out prompt responses. Um, would love to hear if anybody has, you know, additional thoughts on this. Um, if you think that I'm stupid or if you think that check-ins are stupid, feel free to comment that. Um, if you have a coach or are a coach and you do things a little bit differently or, you know, if you agree with me, that's, I like that too. Uh, so feel free to comment whatever your thoughts are on this topic. Um, I'm always wanting to learn and become more efficient and be the best coach I can be. So, you know, if you have positive thoughts or any, any thoughts at all, feel free to comment and I look forward to hearing them. And if you have stayed with this video the whole time, I appreciate you. And Chewy and Baker would say thank you, but they're passed out because they don't care about this stuff. So thank you guys again, and I look forward to hearing some feedback.